question here actually has been and it keeps coming up over and over what do you say about those who accompany the staunch followers of Muhammad ibn Hadi but they say they are only our friends if they are your friends then advise them that Muhammad ibn Hadi has been warned against by the scholars from them Sheikh Rabia Sheikh Ubaid these are his teachers by the way these are his teachers for 30 years they taught him especially Sheikh Rabia they are his teachers and they know him no one knows Muhammad ibn Hadi and his hal better than these men so don't tell me someone in Algeria said he's okay who's probably met him twice or three times in his life you want to ask ask those who know him ask the man the men of the city in which he lives Medina and Nabawiyah ask them ask Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh Rabia has spoken and Sheikh Ubaid don't tell me that you bumped into someone in Morocco in a village and he said Muhammad bin Hadi is okay when you have the Imam of Jarhu Ta'adil Muhaddith, scholar, allama who has been teaching the sunnah for the last 70 or 65 or 70 years who has traveled the world teaching hadith, aqidah, salafiyya an imam of the sunnah praised by over 50 or 60 scholars of his age this is Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh Ubaid. They have sat with him and they have advised him and they have written about it and they have spoken about it. And it is recorded on audio and written in article after article after article running into hundreds of pages about his errors, his tabdir of the Salafiyun. He's splitting of their ranks, warning against the scholars, accusing believers, Salafis, of being adulterers and fornicators and drunkards, cursing them and reviling them. A man against whom a judgment has been, has been given in the courts of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Appeals that were rejected that he tried to make. So the ruling of the Sharia and the ruling of the courts and the ruling of, this, of the scholars who know applies against him and upon him. And don't tell me what does Fulan say and Fulan say in Algeria and what does Fulan say in Riyadh as if you're looking for some sort of ijma. Because that is the, that is the manhaj of Ali al-Halabi. And that is the manhaj of those Hizbiyun who say that you don't have, that the jar is not mu'tabar up until there is a consensus or an ijma or some sort of you know majority vote upon whether a person is a deviant deviation is based upon evidences and proofs things that we've seen ourselves myself abu hakim always tawil abdul ilah lahmami hassan al somali in our faces right that we heard from our ears from this man Muhammad ibn Hadi and there is not a single person sitting in Birmingham not one of them who knows Muhammad bin Hadi better than me and Abu Hakim and Allah knows best not one person sitting but I would say there is not a single person in the United Kingdom whether Arab or Ajami who knows Muhammad ibn Hadi better than myself Abu Hakim or Waste Tawil Abu Idris and Abdul Ilah Lahmami. Not one. Arab or Ajimi. And Allah knows best. And what we heard from him at the beginning of this fitna. So if these people are your friends, advise them. Don't keep company or defend or protect or aid or support a wrongdoer. A splitter of the ranks of Ahlul Sunnah. Declaring Salafis to be Mubtadi'a. The day that we turned and advised him and told him that we don't agree with him, 
then he turned against us just for not agreeing with him from the day that sheikh rabi advised him four years more than four years ago how many times do you think he has stepped into the house of sheikh rabi and knocked on his door and said waliduna give me more advice i need more clarity how many times do you think he's been sifar not once how many times do you think that he's visited sheikh ubaid these are his elders sheikh rabi i think he's 30 years older than him more than 30 about 35 years sheikh ubaid over 30 years older than these are your mashaykh these are your elders these are your scholars if you don't want to sit with them go to riyadh and play to sheikh al-fawzan your audio play your audio to sheikh al-fawzan say sheikh this is what i said irbid ahir right whatever else that terms that he used this is what i said your sheikh advised me why haven't he done that and sheikh al-fawzan is nearly 40 years your senior muhammad bin hadi is a few years older than me why didn't you go to them right at the beginning of the fitna you want the haq go to the kibar ulama you went to sheikh rabi sheikh rabi advised you three times then he sent you messages sheikh ubaid recorded a message for you not once not twice three times this is sheikh rabi and sheikh ubaid having concern for you sheikh rabi invited you to his house and you went in fact you went to the house of sheikh rabi and sheikh rabi advised you okay you don't want to take from these ulama of the accusations that you made the deviation now that you're leading how many shabab he rang me in birmingham more than once three four times warning me against the students of sheikh sheikh ubaid and sheikh rabia then eventually saying that i tell the brothers at maktaba salafia remove all the recordings of ubaid al-jabri from your website what we muqallidun what did I say throughout the whole of this? We have no ta'asub, ta'azub. It's not about ashkhas, it's not about personalities. It was the same in the time of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal when it came to Al-Karabisi and Al-Muhasibi and others. Not to say that I'm making tabdi of the man, abadan. But it's the same principle. Haq is the haq. How can you speak about Karabisi when he's a big alim? How can you speak about Yaqub bin Shayba when he's a big alim? This is Ahmed ibn Hanbal. But who will understand these affairs, my brothers and sisters? Except for the one who sits in the doros and he understands something of the ilm of Jahwa Ta'adil. About enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. About unifying the ranks of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether it be min ba'id or min qareeb. That we unite the ranks of Ahlul Sunnah having a united word. Upon the kitab and the sunnah and the way of the sahaba radiallahu not your whims and desires. So if you say about those who accompany the followers of Muhammad, why are they, why are they still following Muhammad ibn Hadi? What are they waiting for? Revelation? What do you want? What are you waiting for? You know, you know Muhammad ibn Hadi better than we do. Because that's the argument of the Hizbi. That I will not accept up until I hear it. Did you hear it with your own ears? Yeah, actually, I did hear it with my own ears. Not that it's a condition. It's not a shart that I must hear the deviation with my own ears. As long as there is an authentic chain of narration or something written or something recorded. Sufficient. But as it happens in this particular case, I was there. Abu Hakim was there. Uwais Tawil was there. Abdulillah Al-Hamami was there. Hassan Al-Sumali was there. And others, in fact, sitting in front of him and he's reviling and cursing. Fulan Kazab, Fulan Khabith, Fulan Kada, Fulan Kada, Quran Fatan. About who? About Mashaykh, students of knowledge, students of Sheikh Rabi, students of Sheikh Rabi. Then when we leave and we say, actually, we don't agree with you, then he does the same to the next group that comes about us. This is how you split ranks of Ahlul Sunnah. That's not about uniting and making the heart stronger and increasing the numbers upon the truth. That's about dividing and reviling and cursing. 
That's not from the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to accuse a believer, a married man of being a fornicator. What happens in an Islamic court if you do that? Either you bring four witnesses or you're lashed. That's just one of his problems. What about Sheikh Rabi when he advised you? Sheikh Rabi's advice in the early days had nothing to do with the Qadz. Nothing to do with the Qadz because the Qadz came after his public lecture. But he sat with Sheikh Rabi three times before he made the Qadz. So they say, oh, but you sat with Sheikh Rabi, but the Qadz, he didn't mean, he didn't really intend to say that he's an adulterer. But that's not his sitting with Sheikh Rabi. His sitting with Sheikh Rabi was over the other issues and he's dividing Ahl Sunnah, warning against Ahl Sunnah. All of these years, the scholars put every effort possible to keep the ranks of the Salafiyun united. The people of Sunnah, Salafiyah, Hadith and Athar, that we are united, closing all of the means, all of the asbab of ikhtilaf, so that we love each other for the sake of Allah. That we feel the pain of each other when a Salafi suffers this man's phoning. Britain, France, Holland, Belgium, Germany, Algeria, Morocco. He's phoning people in every place right across to Indonesia. Warning against the people of Sunnah and Salafiyyah. Cut them off. Don't talk to them. If they come, and if they come to your land, tell all the Salafis to abandon them. How do I know he did that? Because he did that with us. To me, and he did it to brothers in Morocco. And he did it to brothers in Algeria. Ahlul Sunnah is supposed to be united. You're talking about unity and not dividing. And you are, the, you are the cause of division. Where's that from the Sunnah? That's the manhaj of Sheikh bin Baz. Sheikh bin Baz is commanding Ahlul Sunnah to be united. Don't divide. Abandon all of the means and the asbab of ikhtilaf. Whether small or great. That's why we don't backbite. That's why we don't slander. That, that's why we don't carry namima. We don't scandal manga. That's, that's, that's outside the arena of bid'ah. That we don't even outbid each other. If I go to a brother and say, how much is this? He says, 50 pence. Then you come along and say, don't give it him for 50. I'll give you 60 for that. That's not allowed in Islam. That you go to someone, he's done the deal then you come and try to break that deal because you want that thing. So you say, I'll give you more. Why? Because you're going to hurt his heart. If a man proposes to a woman, then you're not allowed to come and say, I propose you, don't go with him, come with me. Why? What's that going to do? That's going to break his heart. So what's Muhammad bin Hadi doing? These are nothing compared to what he's done. If the Sharia forbids that, a Muslim is one whom other Muslims are safe from his tongue and safe from his hand. No one's safe from his tongue. Sheikh Rabi is not safe from his tongue. He's an old man. You know, he has around him an inner circle of people who are influencing. You can't take from Sheikh Rabi. He's too old. Trying to diminish the worth of the Sheikh. Same with Sheikh Ubaid. You can't take from Sheikh Ubaid. Sheikh Ubaid is not worth anything in ilm. Same with the other Mashaikh, young and old. Anyone who stood in his way became an enemy to him. And you're telling me that these people are your friends? If they're your friends, advise them. Say, are you upon what he's upon? Do you approve of what Muhammad bin Hadi did? If you do, I don't want nothing to do with you. I want to protect my religion. I want to be with the people who love each other for the sake of Allah. And they hate for the sake of Allah. They give for the sake of Allah. They take for the sake of Allah. We want our, our communities united, not divided. And that's why if you look at Britain and parts of America, Alhamdulillah, East Coast especially, through all of these fitan, predominantly or overwhelmingly, the Salafis have remained united. Why? Because we spent 30 years by Allah's permission and from Allah's bounty, remained united upon the haqq because we never hid and we never shied away from rudud. You know, you, you mentioned the term Rad or Rudud. Ah, you're one of those. Because they try to put this false fear in you. That Rad is something dispraiseworthy. 